something quite different. And it's the high level waste, what we must not do and what we should do. Yeah, that's what I hear. Yeah. Too lovely. Yes, we, we just bend it, we bend it up. You can bend it anywhere. Yes, probably down here. Yeah. Okay, I think. No, but this is my normal way of speaking. <laughs> what we must do and what we must not do. And my name is Neil Saxon Muller. I am head of the Institute at Stockholm University. And now I am retiring, uh, retired and work in the South, where I just built a new institute. High level uh, nuclear waste need to be isolated from the biosphere at least, at least in 100,000 years. By this, you have uh, already answered the question. We can, of course, not handle it. The waste comes from the fuel itself, and that is by a clamp, where it's supposed to chill off for 100 years at least, or even more. So it's a certainly imposed on other generations. And then it goes to a final repository in the bedrock in Sweden, Forsmark, or in Olkiloto in Finland. And those two countries, Sweden and Finland, are the only one in the world which claims that they have solved the question. You really hear how stupid it sounds. The second thing that there is also high level waste, high level waste from the reactor, the tanks and other things. And there is absolutely no program in Sweden on this stuff. They just hide it, say, <laughs> maybe in BFA that is just in an open, is something like this room. And that's not good enough. So we should remember. So SKB method, with, uh, which is also the Finnish, is a triple barrier, they claim, that will stay intact at least for hundreds of years. They claim. Okay? We will now, uh, will now show that all this is just nonsense and disinformation. The KBS method is a fake that will not work, no chance whatsoever. The so-called <laughs> <laughs> so barrier of the gun. The copper canister, we know that there are great problems with the copper canister. Maybe I have a... Yeah. You say the same with the, with the repository. Uh, maybe uh, as a, uh, the copper. Oh, now in the pocket. Nice, continue. Uh, the copper colors, and I have many problems now with the corrosion. You know this. And there's a story to come after this. The bentonite backfill, really very, very problematic. They still don't know how to do it. And there is a low, no long safety in this. You should remember. Then we come to the bedrock itself. This is my profession. Uh, there is no long term safety at all. Far too many and large earthquakes, I will show them. Far too large so called respect distances. They claim that they can put canister 50 to 100 meters safely with a distance from a big uh, fault or fracture zone. This is very wrong. And then you have completely unpredicted methane venting. Tectonics. And there are a lot of other things. So there are many, many things. And one can make a diagram there, reliable or unreliable, today and in 400,000 years. KBS claims, of course, and possibility. It's reliable and with assumptions and models, only assumptions and models, they say that it will also stay intact for 100,000 years. Here, our group say that it's much, much remains to show, to solve, to show and improve. That's for sure. So it's unreliable even today. And when we come to 100 years, 100,000 years, certainly it doesn't work. Assumption and model collapse, stability concept collapse, safety concept collapse, respect distance, this doesn't occur. Method explosion is something, and a lot and lot of other things come into this. So if we have this intellectual fault line, all what they claim here is downfolded, going down, and a new paradigm is emerging with completely different uh, forces and processes. And this is what's called, this is modern science, and it's observed science. You can go out in the field, take your hands off, 
see it. And these things is old stuff which they have sit, been sitting on the tables and produced. And they, they, therefore it remains. There are enormous difference. Go, okay. 0.1 um, uh, earthquake or, or magnitude 1700,000 years. And here we have completed it. Full reactivation, respect is uh, Part of the part is strong to be wrong. And I can show some of them. Now we know that the KBS method does not work. Now we have to do something different. Not the solution, but the best under the circle. This is, from my point of view, the storage in a dry rock deposit, remaining accessible, controllable. We have not closed the road. We can still do optional things. But it's not the solution. It's the two ways is that's in the water and in the dry room. This is SKB and Finland and Sweden. It's closed, it's final. They say it can be uh, opened again, but that's really more of saying it's not the truth. They haven't shown it, they have there's absolutely no economy. They have themselves said it will cost more than to put it down. And to put it down, it's so expensive that we can hardly do it. So this is out of the city. And uh, we have a low area, we put it under the Baltic. This is a high area, we, we um, dry, make a drainage of the bedrock, so the groundwater is below, and we have a uh, dry room. How do you do that? Yeah, we have done it once, unfortunately, in Mount Halasos. They were supposed to drain absolutely, absolutely, 100% certainly, if everything goes wrong, maybe groundwater go down. They wrote six centimeters, not five, not ten, six centimeters. However, it became 150 meters. That's a difference. So if we use more tunnel source, we would have 150 meters of rock on top of it. That's a very good, stable position. And there are many other things we can do. So that is the accessible control. When we have not finished, stopped this, we have still time to reconsider it. But it's not a method which allows you, haha, now uh, so you can go on with, with uh, producing more waste, just to take care of the waste which we have. Uh, collapse of the bedrock barrier, the earthquake, the respective distance of the methane gas tectonics, I should say a few things. After the last ice age, the uh, Fellow Scandia went up 800 meters here, Stockholm 450 meters, and here about zero. So that's an enormous amount of uplift in about uh, maximum here 13,000 years, and the maximum rates. The maximum rates in Stockholm here, when, uh, when ice receded, was 15 centimeters per year. That means 0.4 millimeter per per. Day, exactly. That's really very, very much. So, of course, anyone could understand that if there was an old fault, it would become reactive. And, if, and also, it may, may be. So, we had a high seismic country. And this is what we have up to now uh, been, uh, cut out. And uh, the above is 59 high magnitude earthquake. I mean, to see a paleo of old earthquake. I cannot see it if it was less than five and a half on the recent scale. Okay? In order to leave tracks, it must be higher. So in this area, we have 13 events in 13,000 years. Each of those is a step. And then <coughs> all dated here. In the Stockholm area, we have 14 events in 11,000 years. In the Forsmark area, Forsmark area, where they go on their knees and promise that for sure that will be no earthquake more than 0.1 in 100,000 years in magnitude 7. We have 5 in 10,000 years. And the last one was 2,900 years. A big one. And um, the tsunami wave of more than about 20 meters. We go to Hüdigsvall where we have seven events in 10,000 years. The last one here in 2,000. Here in the last one is 900 years. And up in Umeå we have five in 
9,000 years, and so on, and so on. And all these things, and the blue one are synonymous, the other are something which is called liquefaction. And this is the histogram of weather. Not only here, even here in the uh, more recent period, so in the last 5,000 years, we have a seismic risk even of seven on the risk to scale. And these are the uh, events, and these are uh, magnitudes and the total number. So most of them, 50% occurred here when the rate was as high as. And with all those, every single event here is described in this book. And uh, we have also not only magnitude, not only large amount, but also the recurrence, the interval, the so-called frequency. Here in the Stockholm area, because of the VAR chronology, where we have the resolution of one year, though we are 10,000 years back in time. And in the, uh, sometime here in this event, it was even in the autumn of the, day of the VAR year 10,430. So we have seven earthquakes within 102 years. That's enormous time. It's just fantastic. And we also know where the epicenter was and how it moved. And this is an area where it was liquefaction. It's like uh, um, the sediment started to flow. And that has, the distance <laughs> is related to the magnitude. And all the yellow, it's an enormous area, all the fine, 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 fine grains within the sediment, which we can trace only by magnetic material methods, we can see that they move. So it's a very large earthquake indeed. So if we take this Stockholm earthquake, this is the distance for, from the epicenter, this is the magnitude. There are other known in the world. The Alaskan earthquake, which was nine, it liquefied the material of over 200 kilometers, but we don't know where the epicenter really was. This one, uh, in the autumn of 10,000, liquefied south, uh, the southern Lake Mela area over 320 kilometers, from Sefle to um, Santa. And the uh, epicenter is different where you choose it, but it's about to So it must for sure be something, uh, maybe up even at nine on the wrist. It's remarkable. And the one in Hudiksvall is here. But again, I take the minimum This Probably <laughs> the um, epicenter, uh, I don't use the side in the water because I have. So there are huge earthquake, absolutely for sure. If we look historically, we go to seismology, that covers the last hundred years at the most. And the maximum is four and a half. If we take the historical data in the last 600 years, we get 4.4, but I put to 4.5. If we go to the data, the last 5,000, we have six, six, above six to seven. And if we go to the, the cases, surely above eight, no doubt about it. So, depends upon what you're looking, you get a completely different story. Of course, so if I'm a seismologist, I get a completely wrong interpretation. And that's exactly what SKB did. They studied a period of 20 years. And in the so-called KBS Report 3, the red one, they, that is even written, you wouldn't believe it, but if you look it up, they say that the highest magnitude with 4.5 and the absolute maximum distance level it can displace the rock is 6 centimeters. And if this will last, this prediction will stay for one million year. And here we show that it's completely, absolutely, absolute nonsense. So this is their data set. And they predict this is the magnitude and this is they are kicking it up to 100,000 years. And they predict so they will have one magnitude six and 0.1 magnitude seven. I mean, it takes one million years to have a seven. This is what I show in the field, observe. And if I do something similar, I get completely different stories. So those two boxes stay against each other. 
you have the blue box and you have the yellow box with a lot of completely different interpretation. If you now compare it, these are the, this is the richness scale, this is the energy, energy is a logarithmic time scale, the logarithmic scale, so it's much more when it comes up here. So this is the box of SKB. There you have the historical data, the seismological data. I have the geological and paleoseismic data. And uh, this is what they say in the future. 0.1 and 1 and high, about 1,000, about 100, maybe 10, etc. So it's 1,000 billion times more seismic energy in the yellow box than in the blue box. So it's not trivial, trivial things we are talking about. It's just the immense differences. It's like the deficit in the uh, economic budget. Then we come to something different. How far from a fracture can you put the canister? They say 50 to 100 meters. And they take, this is 10, 101 kilometers from the fall. And this is the maximum display, one decimeter, two decimeter, three decimeter, and so on. So they say that magnitude seven is down here, just a few centimeters. 8.2 is up to well, less than a decimeter, one kilometer away. So they say safely we could put it here, 50 to 100 meters. This is model, and I have observations. We have huge thing over here, completely different picture. We will see this one, and we will see a lot of other things. I will give you a picture one kilometer away. So when they have eight centimeters, and I will show you that it was eight meters, which is a bit different. <laughs> so this is the earthquake in uh, Hudiksvall. The epicenter was here, and this one was displaced. We are here at the Boulder Cave. All this area, the bedrock fracture, so it's about 50 kilometers. They said it was less than a, less than a, uh, the, the, the kilometer away. This, the Boulder Cave, where called, the whole rock is fractured up into pieces. And that is 12 kilometers away. 12 kilometers away. That's a very big difference. 12 kilometers instead of a few hundred meters. <laughs> Here we have the huge fault which moved 10,000 in this period, it was 7 fold, especially 10,430 in the old. Here it is, and we will look at a place one kilometer to the north. This is the fault, one kilometer to the north. Here nothing could happen which was exceeded 8 centimeters. This one is 6 to 8 meters and it occurred right at that year. So what do you say about it? You must say, this is, the reality shows that what they claim is nonsense. You go to an Italian uh, example, it's at magnitude seven. And of course it's not just one fall which goes up and up. It's like a butterfly, it's side fall. So here is the one main, and then there's side fall, and they are even sympathetic because it, it, it trembles so much, it's even move, moves over there. And this is the magnet, two to three meters, one meter, one to two meters, uh, and uh, one to two, uh, open to decimeter. And the whole width of this is 10 kilometers. And they were talking about less than a kilometer. You understand? What is this? I mean, reality kills them if they just want to look at reality. But they don't want to look at reality. <laughs> they don't want reality. They want our models. They may say. <laughs> then they also claim that there may be very, like, um, bedrock plinths. You have one wonderful in Finland. Okay? This is the bedrock. And here it's weak zone, surrounded by weak zone. You have other faults here moved. But if there was a new fault, it should have been taken up by they say, theoretically. But what happened? Here, after the ice age, it was cut by a fault 10 kilometers long, 3 meters high, and about 
6.8 on the Richter scale, it has to be. Again, again, observation, of course, are superior to weird models. And that, this is very simple, despite this is. Then we have something completely new, which they have never even considered. <laughs> and that is, in the bedrock, we have methane. And methane under high pressure, uh, there's the water pressure and the bedrock pressure and the temperature. When it's underneath the red line, it could be as ice, okay? Hydrate, clatrot in chemistry. This is the geothermal gradient. So because this is below here, uh, uh, it's only in this part it can be today. <laughs> and the other one is gas phase. The transition from ice to gas is phase transition. That don't need any oxidation, no gas, and so it just poof, it jumps. The different one liter of ice, like a, like a milk package, is transferred as gas to 168. So you understand that this is an enormous expansion. So how do we change? So we, if permafrost comes, of course this gradient will go down. And we could have this much, much higher up, up to uh, this year. And if ice is deforming, that means the pressure, it goes up so you can have methane hydrate ice all the way up to the very surface. For so these two processes. So the expansion is an explosion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and so and we have very several examples of this, but we cannot explain it in other other ways than <laughs> this method. Explain it, explosion. So we have the temperature pressure and the explosive method, ice goes to methane gas, and this is the volumetric difference. So this li this little uh, milk package goes to 168 milk package. So this is something which has to be considered. The last example of this is 2,000 years old, and it happened up north of Hudiksvall, which is interesting. And because of some geochemical signals, we can see that it was this. So we come to, so we have this area, and a lot of faults here, and this up here in Hudiksvall, where we have one of the, uh, this one being uh, of methane welding. And then we have Rauma and Olkelote on the other side, which of course is a bit interesting. Because it's surrounded by faults. In those faults, Finnish colleagues have been fired. Young faults of the reaction, young sediment disturbance, and gas seepage. Gas methane. So this area on the whole is there's a lot of methane in the bedroom, and full <coughs> fractures in caves in, in this. The interesting thing that those who made this wonderful study, when they choose Olkilot, I immediately said, wow, it's some very exciting thing being published in Finland. But they kept quiet because it's better to be quiet. Well, that's a terrible thing with science. They often be, keep quiet because then they get promotion and they get funding. If they speak up, well, they don't get promotion and they get no funding. So we have worked a little here. Here we found liquefaction, beautiful liquefaction. Here we found a mega tectonic structure, really very small tectonic. And here it's been very, very extensive gas seepage. They were drilling for water and they got a lot of gas, which stayed for year after year. And this is some of the liquefaction structure, and this is some of the enormous boulder fracture. So, benefits with the, 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 the compared to the other way is the freedom of action, possibility of control, repair, retrieve, and remove. Uh, and it's very much cheaper, about at least not more than one third of the other cost, maybe even much less. They harmonize with scientific knowledge, environmental concern, energy need, maybe, and possible positive technological innovation in the future if you are of believe in that. And uh, from this, of course, we can go down 
to future any other kind of and the rest product it's good enough to put into two but what we have here in the KBS lab, we sooner or later it, it will disintegrate. You cannot have it for 100,000 years in, um, uh, in solid, in, in untouched condition. Here it's a test it can be removed. And then there are possible technical, they, they may not work, but it's the possibility to do something with it, which is have to be put onto the thing. So in conclusion, put the, to help with the KBS stream in, the place where it rightly belongs. Keep the control and freedom only by the media. The idea is to be the best under the circuit. No solution. Please, I don't say that it's a solution. The idea is not a solution, just an extend, uh, extended nuclear power and you, uh, not, to, not to justify. The idea is much cheaper and it excludes this terrible cloud, which is temporary storage with zero. You have two references. This is the book where all the scientific matter is, and this is the book where I have the, the discussion uh, with very nice illustration. So this was my contribution on, no, on the waste. And of course, this is very important. Now when we heard that, for example, our Russian colleagues, where do you want to send the waste? Oh, to, to uh, Scandinavia, which have solved the question. That's not the place. We don't. We haven't done that. So it comes back, and also now, for example, uh, the SKB method is under reviewing, and they are really standing under an enormous pressure from uh, environmental. Concerns. So if environmental concerns should be rightly put on it, it will never pass. But we cannot be sure of that. But one thing we might. We are all upset and angry about the new law taken in in July 17 because uh, it can allow extension of nuclear power despite the, um, the waste of being solved. Mm. We don't know what it means. It could, could, if we try to see if there could be something positive, it might be so that they have sensed that KBS2 will not pass. And in this enormous hope to continue, then, then the only way would be to bypass the law with a new one. That's a nice way to put it, to, to treat it. But maybe, for me, uh, for me, the SKB method, the KBSD, that's terrible. Because there's no way that 